Today I am going to seal up the short block of my engine. We're going to install a Jessel belt drive system and our billet daily engineering dry sump oil pan and oil pump. Here is the short block. It's all blueprinted. It's all assembled. I have spoken with Rick, the fabricator, who's going to do the turbo kit, and we plan to run my turbo drain straight into this valley cover or where the valley cover will be. So no modifications need to be done to the Jessel belt drive timing cover plate. So we can go ahead and final install it onto the engine block as well as the oil pan. So let's get to work. This Jessel belt drive kit replaces the thrust plate you would normally run on an LS block and instead uses this as its captured thrust plate. So three bolts are gonna bolt to the camshaft and there's two bolt holes that'll bolt it directly to the engine block. Because this is going to be centered on the camshaft exactly, I'm actually gonna go ahead and torque and install this into the motor because this register where the O-ring is gonna sit needs to align to this thrust plate which will be hard mounted to the block. So let's get this torque down and installed first and then we'll fit the actual timing cover plate over the thrust plate. So first I'm just gonna install and get everything threaded, get everything started first on this cam thrust plate attachment. So we got these three camshaft bolts just like normal and then we've got a couple thrust plate bolts that'll bolt all of this and secure it to the engine block. Later in this video we will also degree the camshaft to make sure everything is installed properly. I'm going to torque the camshaft bolts to 30 foot-pounds. And then we'll torque these little thrust plate bolts to seven and a half. That will be plenty. And there we go. And now I'm just going to install some of the timing cover bolts to hold everything in place. We'll go ahead and torque it down. But we can't install the other three yet because they are on this ATI cam sensor bracket and we need to get the belts on and degreed first before we can final install these three. I guess I forgot to hit record when I actually mounted this plate, um, but all I did was put a little bit of WD-40 around this receiver groove to pop it over the O-ring without cutting it or disrupting it at all. And um, the reason we did this first again was so that the plate could be centered around this O-ring and not the plate bolted up and now we're trying to center the O-ring and could potentially have a leak in the future, but everything is mounted, everything's good to go. We can now put the gears on, put the belt on, and degree this camshaft to make sure it is lined up where the manufacturer stated it would be. Okay, it's the next day back on the engine. So we're gonna continue on installing the Jessel belt drive kit. We're gonna start with the belt drive installed straight up on zero and then we'll degree it and see uh, really just to verify that everything is where it is supposed to be just like that We'll just line up the two dots on these gears and then on the cam gear itself, let me bring you guys in here. You can see we have a zero point and then we have 10 degrees advanced, 10 degrees retard, and then we have another uh, indicator mark on the outer shell. And so if you ever want to advance or retard the camshaft, you just loosen these four bolts or these four nuts and then you can clock it and advance or retard. Super simple. Now we have our ATI four trigger plate here that's going to go right there. And on these Jessel belt drive kits, this main cam bolt is left hand thread. So you're going to turn it left to tighten and it torques to 70 foot pounds. So I just want to make sure I get this dowel pin lined up all the way through. Now let's slowly draw it up, tighten everything together. 
and for anybody who says you should never loosen a bolt with a breaker bar, how do you explain left hand threads? Just like that. Now we can roll the motor back over, put a cam degree wheel on it, and degree the camshaft to make sure that it is lined up where um, comp cams says it is. Okay, first step, we're gonna rotate this motor over and find top dead center. Just a rough spot, it doesn't have to be exact right now. We'll dial it in in a second. Right about there is good with me. Now we're gonna bust off our crank gear and install our degree wheel. And then we just have a little piece of welding wire that we're gonna screw into the block to be our new pointer for our calculations. All right, now let's just lo loosely, roughly get our zero lined up on the pointer. And then we're just gonna tighten this bolt down a little bit so nothing moves. Now what I like to do is roll the engine to a set point on this dial indicator. And we'll take note of where this pointer lines up. Currently it's at 15 degrees. Now we're gonna roll the motor all the way back over and come back up to that same point without going past it. And we're at five degrees, so we're a little bit off. So now we'll just tweak this pointer and tweak the wheel until this pointer lines up dead on zero. All right, so we're approaching our 50 thou point below top dead center. About 11 degrees on the wheel. Now let's go 50 degrees, or 50 thou again below top dead center. And we are right on 11. All right, so now our degree wheel is perfectly aligned with this timing pointer and is a true representation of what TDC is on the motor. Next, we're gonna drop in a pair of lifters. And now we're gonna grab a dial indicator and position it somewhere where the pistons won't interfere with our measurements. If you have a dome on the piston or anything like that. And I like to drop a push rod on your intake lifter. And now we'll just get this dial indicator set up on the push rod. And you really want to make sure that this assembly is as straight and perpendicular as possible. That way you get a true measurement of your lift on the dial indicator. Actually, we can tweak this a little bit better to get it a little straighter. All right. So let's verify this is on the base circle of the cam. Yep, nothing's moving. Set it on zero. Now let's go up to peak lift, watching our dial indicator. Which is about 444 thousandths of lobe lift. And now I'm gonna rotate the engine back over until my dial indicator reads zero. And take a note, so currently the motor is now at 153 degrees on this pointer. So let's type that into our calculator. Now let's rotate it in reverse, go back below peak lift, back below that zero point. And then in order to take out the slack of the belt and everything in the motor, rotate it clockwise back to zero. And now we're gonna add this new number, which is about 70, about 77 and a half. Now we have a number of 230.5, divide that by two, 115 and a quarter. And my cam is supposed to be 116, so we are 0.75 degrees off of true where it's supposed to be. And I am super okay and happy with that. That is as good as we will get with the naked eye. Yeah, we're dead on. So yeah, within under a degree of deviation, 
stack of tolerances, could be anything, but nonetheless, I'm super okay with that. So now we know in the future, if I go plus two on advance or minus two on retard, we know exactly what the new intake center line of the camshaft will be. But basically, we're just verifying that everything is where it's supposed to be. So I can go ahead and install the ATI balancer now. We can put on the ATI cam sensor bracket and continue on with finishing off the front of this engine. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and advance this camshaft probably four degrees. I feel like that's a good starting point for this combo. And then the beauty of this kit is whenever we get on the dyno, if we wanna make an adjustment, all we have to do is take off this front pulley or this front bolt. Again, it's reverse thread. And then all we do is loosen these four nuts, clock it plus two, and we're good. And what's so nice about this kit is the adjustability and um, you want that in a race motor so you can really dial in the torque curve of the engine to your RPM range of what you're gonna be doing with the motor. So let's say we get on the dyno and this camshaft is a little bit too big for the application for what I'm trying to do. Well, then all we have to do is advance it a couple degrees and we can lower the torque curve of the engine. That's what's so trick and vice versa. If the camshaft is too small and the torque curve is too low for the RPM range that I need when I'm racing, all we have to do is retard the camshaft a few degrees. And again, we're just moving the torque curve. Just give these a little torque. About 17 foot pounds is all you need. And now we can reinstall our little sensor reluctor bracket. I think this is the highlight of the engine for me. So? Whole front drive? This whole front ATI kit doodad whipping snipper. Thing of a hogging. The what you call it? The and this goes in there. Kind of like sort of so. Oh. You got a dangerous combo when you put them together. So it looks like our cam sensor is hitting that reluctor just a little bit, but they actually sent me a bunch of shims that we can use to space this sensor and get our reluctor depth correct. All right, got those shims under my screws now. Let's try this again. I have about 20 thou clearance. That should do the trick. Roll the motor all the way over to make sure that all of these pickup teeth have the same clearance. Oh yeah, that'll work perfectly. And let's get our spacers popped on the crank now to get our balancer in the right spot. And now we can install our balancer. It is now time to final install the oil pan. Again, I'm just gonna do a little bit of an RTV bead on the corners of this block. And we do this on LS, on any LS build really. Not just specifically this block. Pop our gasket down and then bring in this beautiful billet oil pump, oil pan pump combo. Boom. And then like anything with lots of fasteners, I like to just get everything threaded first before tightening down any of these bolts. That way we can make sure everything is lined up correctly and there's no issues. And I did change all the hardware out on this kit for stainless hardware, just for the extra bling.
Okay, now that we have all the fasteners started on this oil pan, we can come back and start torquing them down. All right, there it is. The short block for this combo is all finished up. It's sealed off and it is now ready for the top end to be installed. We are currently waiting for the rocker arm shaft stands to bolt these TND rockers to the CID heads. We had to change the stand a little bit to correct some alignment problems and get the geometry perfect. So we're gonna have a little bit of a delay until those stands get here to resume content on this engine build. So hopefully those come in in the next week or two and then we can resume this engine build. The next step will be checking piston to valve clearance and verifying push rod length and going over the valve train geometry. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.